Yes, hello to you all once again. Welcome back to your number one and hopefully your favourite classic dirt bike TV channel where we continue to take a look at more of those old school uh, vintage race bikes from way back in the day when, of course, at that time, our particular sport it was called scrambling and not the modern interpretation, which is now called uh, motocross. By the way, uh, a big thank you to all the brand new subscribers who have just uh, recently signed up to CDB uh, TV because you've uh, just helped me uh, surpass that 16,000 subscribers total. So we are uh, now already on our way uh, to that magical 17,000 uh, total. So thanks uh, once again to everybody out there in YouTube land who are supporting me here at uh, CDB uh, TV. So right now we're going to take a look at a bike that uh, I actually came across a few years back at the Scottish uh, Motorcycle uh, Show and this was uh, a fully restored uh, British uh, four-stroke uh, thumper and uh, this particular bike uh, belonged to classic uh, bike builder and racer Ian uh, Ridley. So let's jump straight into that video right now and take a look at Ian's lovely 1975 500ccm. Okay, so this uh, fantastic looking 1975 500ccm is a bike that I came across while I was uh, at the Scottish Motorcycle Show just a few years back and uh, this uh, 75 Alan Clues 500 is a bike that uh, had undergone a complete restoration by Ian Ridley and in fact this example here was just uh, one of a collection of immaculate classics that Ian had uh, sitting on his stand uh, at that uh, weekend's uh, motorcycle show. Although, uh, just for the purposes of this uh, video, we'll uh, just concentrate on this uh, particular machine uh, this time round. Now, the particulars of uh, this bike are that uh, it was made uh, originally in January of 1975 and uh, the frame uh, number is stamped at 75001, which uh, suggests to me that this was possibly the first chassis of the production line in that year. And also, just in case you're interested, uh, the engine numbers are stamped at 90, 84, 10, 75 and 20. So if you're a CCM expert and you're able to source engine number data, then you'll be able to learn exactly uh, what the parameters are for this bike's uh, power plant. So for all of you CCM aficionados out there, here's a very quick look at some of those numbers uh, once again relating uh, to the frame and engine on our 1975 uh, 500. Uh, but without doubt, uh, these iconic uh, CCMs are uh, certainly up there with some of the great Alan Clues bikes of the 1970s and these yellow tankers will be forever associated with the legendary works CCM rider Vic Eastwood who was one of a team of three riders that Alan Clues employed in 1975 with of course the other two being the great John Banks and of course the legendary Norman Barrow who were all top British riders in that year. Now, as I remember, uh, back in 1974, uh, CCM uh, did have uh, metal profile uh, front forks on uh, these bikes, although for 75, uh, Alan Clues then designed his own forks with these uh, alloy bottles on the top of each fork leg so that uh, longer springs could be fitted and uh, the oil capacity in each leg increased. And these uh, forks also had uh, magnesium sliders and adjustable damping uh, both ways. Uh, so these uh, Clues forks were seen as quite a big improvement over the earlier uh, metal profiles. And uh, furthermore, uh, bump damping uh, could also be adjusted by uh, turning this little screw either way, which uh, was situated uh, at the bottom of each of the fork uh, stanchions. And once more, a nice uh, set of triple clamps, all 
uh, nicely painted up by Ian during the bike's uh, restoration. But uh, many of the fork yokes or uh, triple clamps on these uh, CCMs uh, were manufactured in magnesium, but uh, I'm unable to clarify if that's uh, the case here with uh, this featured bike. But certainly these front and the rear hubs on our 75 bike are the genuine CCM article, which is in keeping uh, with the many stock original parts that are fitted uh, onto this bike, because these are uh, super rare parts nowadays, which is uh, why you often uh, see uh, those uh, remanufactured uh, CCMs in these modern times uh, now being fitted with uh, either CZ or even Myco hubs uh, because uh, these original uh, CCM hubs are virtually impossible uh, to find second hand and uh, because as I said uh, being made of magnesium uh, also adds uh, to the rarity of these components. But back in 1975, it's said that Alan Clues uh, wasn't too happy with the old shocks that were fitted to these uh, CCMs. And uh, because there wasn't much of an alternative on the market at that time, he then approached Armstrong uh, to see if they could help. And uh, they then ended up uh, manufacturing a pair of gas and oil dampers, which uh, surprisingly uh, worked uh, very well. And uh, as you're aware, ironically, uh, Armstrong uh, would end up uh, taking over CCM uh, some years in the future. So moving on to our 1975 uh, power plant, which is of course the iconic BSA B50 single four-stroker that uh, Alan Clues worked his magic on uh, to make it into a fully blown works uh, competition engine. Now the previous 1974 motor did have a bore of 88 millimeters and a stroke of 82 uh, millimeters although for 1975 Alan uh, then increased the stroke of this engine to 90 millimeters which produced uh, much smoother power in the mid-range and also gave the engine increased uh, reliability and uh, these gold colored clutch casings uh, were certainly a bit of a trademark for these 19 75 uh, motors with their superbly uh, machined and ribbed uh, castings and uh, CCM were also renowned for the idea of using the motors uh, casings to mount the footrest hangers uh, rather than either welding or bolting them on uh, to the bottom rails of the bike's uh, chassis. But you certainly have to give Alan Clues credit for what he did with this old uh, BSE engine because he took what was basically a pretty lame road bike motor and then retuned it for much more power and uh, after he'd worked his magic on this B50 power plant uh, it was more than capable of taking on anything that the Japanese had on the racetrack at that time and uh, more often than not he was beating uh, the many big bore two strokers that were dominating motocross in the 1970s and this motor certainly had more than enough grunt to satisfy the likes of Vic Eastwood and uh, John Banks. And as you know, the fuel supply to the big 500 engine was fed through an Amal concentric uh, carburetor. And as I remember, I'm pretty sure that these were uh, quite good carburetors uh, for their day uh, during that 1975 period. Now, please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm pretty sure that these Air boxes that were fitted to these bikes back in 1975 uh, were originally made in fiberglass, but uh, this part here could certainly be a more uh, modern plastic uh, replacement. Although, uh, because I never actually talked to the bike's uh, builder, Ian Ridley, on the day, I can't really uh, verify that claim. But almost certainly it was a fiberglass uh, fuel tank on the 75 CCMs. Uh, fiberglass, as you know, was the chosen material on many 1970s dirt bikes because it was uh, light and relatively cheap uh, to produce and uh, it was just about perfect for making things like fuel tanks and side panels and uh, mudguards for uh, many makes and models of different uh, off-roaders. But of course the downside 
of fiberglass was that it was a bit brittle and broke quite easily and that's why you very seldom see them now uh, in these uh, modern times. Now there were no uh, silencers or uh, tailpipes to speak of on these big four strokers. Uh, it was a, just a simple straight through big bore header pipe that led into this uh, stubby uh, short tail cone that emerged uh, just in front of the right side of the rear shock. Although I have to say the workmanship and finish on this Ian Ridley bike is certainly first class and uh, this rear hub here has been uh, completely refurbished and then relaced with brand new uh, spokes uh, onto the bike's original uh, wheels which I believe have been uh, powder coated although I think back in the day these uh, would have uh, more than likely have just been polished alloy rims uh, when they first left the CCM factory at uh, Schiffnell Street in uh, Bolton. But these uh, steel CCM chassis and uh, swing arms in 75 were uh, TIG and bronze uh, welded and then of course chrome plated and uh, many of these frames uh, would have been built uh, by the great Mike Etoff who as you remember later uh, left CCM to start up his own motorcycle company uh, Cotton EMC or Cotton EMX as it was uh, later uh, known but Mike Etoff was without doubt uh, instrumental in the early successes of the Alan Clues uh, empire but you have to say that uh, this is certainly a high quality build from Ian Ridley who's uh, done his very best to retain as much of the bike's originality as possible and although the control cables uh, are of course replacement items uh, much of the rest of this uh, CCM machine including uh, the handlebars, uh, levers and throttle gasser are still uh, the real deal from that legendary uh, 1970s uh, era. But you certainly need a steady hand on this uh, throttle twist grip to keep that big B50 motor in its place but of course uh, that wasn't really a problem uh, for the likes of John Banks and Vic Eastwood who would wind this gasser fully to its stop each time that they took uh, to the racetrack. And uh, the great thing about these big CCMs is that you didn't have to keep uh, constantly uh, pulling the clutch in and out to shift that three speed uh, gearbox because uh, normally you just uh, leave the start line and then either use uh, second or third gear on the racetrack because these things pulled like the proverbial tractor and uh, even to slow down it was usually just a case of uh, closing the throttle and let that big B50 motor do all of the engine's braking. But uh, since the rebuild of Ian's 1975 uh, 500 as you've probably guessed it's uh, never been put back on the racetrack which uh, doesn't really surprise me because it's uh, much too good a machine to be an everyday uh, race bike and I don't think that Ian uh, really had any intention of building it to race and as far as I'm aware uh, he's already secured uh, some trophies and other awards at various shows and off-road uh, bike events for his handiwork on this uh, restoration. Besides, it will fit in nicely with all of the other immaculate classics that Ian has tucked away uh, in his workshop. And it's said that when the great uh, Vic Eastwood uh, rode one of these 75s back in the day, he certainly uh, took them uh, to the max and uh, Vic was also renowned for being quite a hard rider uh, when it came to riding these uh, on the racetrack. But another great classic from the Ian Ridley collection and of course an iconic machine from the Clues Empire from 1975. Well there you have it, I do hope you enjoyed that walk around Ian Ridley's lovely 1975 500 uh, CCM uh, vintage uh, racer and that of course is just uh, one of the many bikes 
that Ian has in his uh, collection and hopefully in the coming weeks and months we may uh, be able to feature a few more from Ian's uh, fantastic uh, motorcycle uh, collection. So coming up in my, my video channel in the next week or so we're going to be heading uh, down to the Scottish uh, borders to film uh, this lovely old uh, vintage uh, dot scrambler. Now uh, this machine here has just recently undergone a full uh, restoration and uh, the particular owner of this bike has had uh, the machine since uh, brand new and he's currently owned it for more than 50 years. So we'll be taking a walk around this bike and uh, getting a few more details about its build when we return to CDB uh, TV. But until then, of course, everybody out there, continue to be safe and well when you're riding those old uh, vintage racers. And I hope to see you back here again very soon so we can talk about more of this old school vintage I am right here on your number one and favourite classic dirt bike TV channel. <laughs>